Hello, printmakers, and welcome again to Brit and Sam with Post Studio Printmaking. And we'll be talking about building plates with our red collagraph plate building. Uh, and we're talking through a multicolor series here. So if you're just starting with this plate, please go back and watch the yellow plate so that you can get them in sequence. We're also going to be talking about printing the plates in sequence as well. So just be aware that those videos have been shared. Um, to get started with the red plate, we are working here with materials such as chipboard, obviously, as you can see, or you can also use uh, bookboard, paintbrushes, modeling paste, or gesso, raise a razor blade just to like clear your plate a little bit, a stencil is what we're using for this image, and then an old debit card or a piece of cardboard. So to carry on, um, you're going to start by, as you can see on our plate, you're going to start by sketching out the image. So we've done this prior. Um, to going into this. So you're going to sketch out the general area you'd like the design to fill. Um, and then we go went ahead, it's perfect timing in the video, um, and place the stencil over top. And then we're going to fill it using this modeling paste. If you don't have one of these palette knives like Sam is using, an old debit card or piece of cardboard works great. Or a butter knife, an old butter knife that you uh, decide to use. That'd be a great tool as well. Um, so move the stencil and reveal the design once you put down your gesso. We are playing it repeatedly for your own edification, um, just so that you can take a look at this and try to um, get a sense of it over and over and over as we play the, play the video itself. So once you put laid down your, your modeling paste, your gesso, you pull up that, that stencil and then you're going to begin to remove uh, some of the material to really center in your design there. So as Sam said just there previously, um, once the stencil is down, there might be some areas see where that plastic kind of overlaps. Um, you can go back in and add into the design using the same tools, so the palette knife, the butter knife, or using a paintbrush. And you can also draw in using other things. So we've used a razor blade to make sure that we have those clear um, veins going through that um, the modeling paste so that we only get that mod modeling paste design or drawing in it such as in the upper left hand corner with a toothpick or the edge of something else just to add to the design. Um, and once you've completed your design, as we have here, you will want to coat the entire surface in polyurethane. Um, we'll repeat this in every video, but please, please, please do it in a ventilated area. Um, though it is not all that harmful, um, we just, you don't want to stink up your entire house um, or work area. Um, the people around you will not be very happy and your body won't be very happy with you either. Um, so just when you're putting the polyurethane on, make sure you put plenty of coats so you can no longer um, feel that cardboard so your ink is not going to soak in um, and do it in a well ventilated area. All right, and uh, make sure you apply as many layers of that polyurethane as needed and so you get a nice smooth surface. If you apply it to both sides of your chipboard or bookboard, it will seal your plate better, but that drying process will take quite a long time um, because that chipboard is going to want to be absorbing all of that polyurethane on both sides. We'd recommend get one side coated, thick and dry, and then if you need to, you don't have to, you can apply uh, that polyurethane to the back side as well. Um, it's an unnecessary step, but you could do it to really seal that board up um, so you can have it for years and years and years and years because the chipboard or bookboard could be worn away by dampness or other materials getting exposed to it. So with that, thank you all. We really appreciate your time. We'll see you next time. Bye.